Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Jesus said, the first commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is the only Lord. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, to keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Grant us, O Lord, to trust in you with all our hearts. For as you always resist the proud who confide in their own strength, so you never forsake those who make their boast of your mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading. A reading from James. My brothers and sisters, do you with your acts of favoritism really believe in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ? For if a person with gold rings and fine clothes comes into your city, and if a poor person in very clothes also comes in, and if you take notice of the one wearing the fine clothes and say, have a seat here, please, while to the other one is, who is poor, you say, stand there or sit at my feet. Have you not made distinctions among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Listen, my beloved brothers and sisters, has, God, has not God chosen the poor in the world to be rich in faith and to be heirs of the kingdom that he has promised to those who love him? But you have dishonored the poor. Is it not the rich who oppress you? Is it not they who drag you into court? Is it not they who bless me, the excellent name that was invoked over you? You do well if you really fulfill the royal law according to the scripture. You shall love your neighbor as yourselves. But if you show partiality, you commit sin and are convicted by the law as transgressors. For whoever keeps the whole law but fails in one point has become accountable for all of it. For the one who said, you shall not commit adultery also said, you shall not murder. Now, if you do not commit adultery, but if you murder, you have become a transgressor of the law. So speak and so act as those who are to be judged by the law of liberty. For judgment will be without mercy to anyone who has shown no mercy. Mercy triumphs over judgment. What, get it, what good is it, my brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith, but do not have works? Can faith save you? If a brother or sister is naked and lacks daily food, and one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm, and eat your fill, and yet you do not supply their bodily needs, what is the good of that? So faith by itself, if it has no works, is dead. 
the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Praise the Lord. sing praises to my God while I have my being. Put not your trust in rulers, nor in any child of earth, for there is no help in them. When they breathe their last, they return to earth, and in that day their thoughts perish. Happy are they who have the God of Jacob for their help, whose hope is in the Lord their God, who made the heaven and earth, the seas, and all that is in them, who keeps his promise forever, who gives justice to those who are oppressed, and a food to those who hunger. The Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord cares for the stranger. He sustains the orphan and widow but frustrates the way of the wicked. The Lord shall reign forever. Your God, O Zion, throughout all generations. Hallelujah. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Jesus set out and went away to the region of Tyre. He entered a house and did not want anyone to know he was there, yet he could not escape notice. But a woman whose little daughter had an unclean spirit immediately heard about him, and she came and bowed down at his feet. Now the woman was a Gentile, a Syrophoenician origin. She begged him to cast the demon out of her daughter, he said to her, let the children be fed first, for it is not fair to take the children's food and to throw it to the dogs. But she answered him, sir, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. Then he said to her, for saying that you may go, the demon has left your daughter. So she went home, found the child lying on the bed and the demon gone. Then he returned from the region of Tyre and went by way of Sidon towards the Sea of Galilee in the region of the Decapolis. They brought to him a deaf man who had an impediment in his speech and they begged him to lay his hand on him. He took him aside in private away from the crowd and put his fingers into his ears and he spat and touched his tongue. Then he looking up to heaven, he sighed and said to them, Ephaphatha, that is, be opened. And immediately his ears were opened, the tongue was released, and he spoke plainly. Then Jesus ordered them to tell no one. But the more he ordered them, the more zealously they proclaimed it. They were astounded beyond measure, saying, he has done everything well. He even makes the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. The Gospel of the Lord. I speak now in the name of one who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let the children be fed first, for it is not fair to take the children's food and to throw it to the dogs. Ouch. You know who the dog was that Jesus was referring to in this passage? It was that woman, the Syrophoenician woman who went to him begging for healing for her daughter. Let the children be fed first, for it's not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. This is one of the hardest 
gospel passages for me to wrap my mind around every time it comes up. I sort of say, ugh. Because this is a side of Jesus that doesn't match what I know of Christ. He called this woman, an outsider, a dog when she was in a desperate time. This does not match the lessons that we learn as people of faith who are called to love everyone and welcome everyone no matter where they come from or who they are. We are taught everyone belongs and that's the message we get from Jesus in most of the Gospels. But that's not what we see from him in this first part of the story. He calls her a dog. Now there are a lot of theologians and scholars and people who have tried to make excuses for Jesus for generations, but they all kind of fall flat. I think they're all really just sort of missing the mark because the fact is that Jesus wasn't being kind in this moment and I don't know why. But being a person of faith, I do believe that every part of scripture has something meaningful to teach us, that we are supposed to find God in it all and through it all. And I do find God in this. But for me today, the hero of this story at first isn't so much Jesus, but it's this Syrophoenician woman. Think about her for a moment. She is a woman who is an outsider, a Gentile. Somebody whose community, quite honestly, has had beef with Jesus' community for quite some time. And I think that's part of how Jesus teaches her. It's part of why he uh, treated her in that way. But she had the guts to go into this building where Jesus was, having heard about him from who knows where, because she was so desperate for her daughter, who had an unclean spirit to be well again. She goes in there knowing that she's a Gentile woman, and Jesus, we know from this text, didn't want to see anybody at that point. Maybe he was tired and needed a nap, who knows. But she goes and she bows down and begs at his feet. And he responds first in that way that I can't quite understand. Let the children be fed first, for it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. Now if it were me and I were an outsider, approaching Jesus, this unknown man in this way, and bowing down to him, begging for my child's life, and he responded to me like that, I think I might run away crying. But that's not what she did at all. She persisted. She stood up to him. She advocated for herself, knowing what she needed and what her child needed. She was brave and she was strong. And she said to him, let the children be fed first. Oh no, that's what Jesus said, sorry, excuse me. She said, sir, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. When she stood up to him, when she persisted, when she advocated for herself and for her daughter, something shifted in Jesus' ministry, something changed. He changed his mind and said to her, for saying that, you may go. The demon has left your daughter. So she went home, found the child lying on the bed, and the demon gone. And then things continue to shift in Jesus' ministry. The text tells us here, he went by way of Sidon towards the Sea of Galilee in the region of Decapolis. Now people who study biblical geography say that it's not really possible to go that way. It doesn't completely make sense, but what is notable is that he didn't go back to Capernaum. He didn't go back to the territory of his own people, but he continued to move out into foreign lands, and we know how the trajectory of his ministry went after that. We all know that Jesus taught us to love the outsider, to welcome everybody in, that Jesus flipped power structures on their head, and we know that the tradition we grow up with as Christians is one that is accepting of everybody. And that's what happened from this point in the ministry on. Jesus was rerouted at this point in his ministry, and his ministry expanded to include a lot of people. 
this woman, this Syrophoenician woman who was very brave, who stood up to him, who was an outsider, who was from a community that had had beef with Jesus' community, some, some imbalance of power was going on there that we can't even understand. She stood up to him and she advocated and she rerouted the path of Jesus' ministry. And her daughter was healed. Sometimes in our prayer life, in our world, it seems that things are not going right. And we're not really sure what is going on with God. Sometimes it seems to us, whether or not it's true is another story, but it seems to us like if all of this terrible stuff is going on, where is God? And sometimes we are in so much turmoil that we just almost don't even feel God. We're not sure what's going on in our faith and we think we're supposed to be feeling good and holy and happy and peaceful, but we just don't. And we're not really sure where to put that. There have been times lately where I've been feeling a little bit of that. There is so much crisis going on in our world. There are a lot of things to be upset about and angry about and terrified about. For me, the closest to my heart, of course, is my kids. I've talked to lots of you about how nervous I am about my kids, terrified actually, because they're not eligible for vaccination. And after 520 days, 520 days, yes, you heard that right, of being based at home, they went back to in-person school. And never did I think that I would keep them home for 520 days to keep them safe only to send them back in the middle of the Delta variant surge. It's scary. And there have been times when I have found that some of my usual prayers are not quite cutting it for me. Typically in my prayer life, I can pray and sort of be still and know that God is God and God is love and find that peace. But sometimes when things are really not right in our world, that just isn't enough. So my own prayer life has shifted a little bit at times lately, and I've been finding a lot of comfort in the psalmists. There is a tradition in our church and also in our cousins of faith, other faith traditions that come from Abraham, our Jewish and Muslim friends of lament and wailing and letting it all out there not just submitting or feeling calm all the time, which is good and how I tend to be in my prayer time. I love my contemplative prayer. I love to be still and know that God is God and all is good. That is, that is good stuff. But there's also a tradition of allowing our desperate pleas to God out, letting our anger or our fear, our worries out. And so the Psalms these days have been putting a lot of words to my own prayers because that's what the psalmists did. Listen to this one. This is Psalm 69. Save me, O God, for the waters have come up to my neck. I sink in deep mire where there is no foothold. I have come into deep waters and the flood sweeps over me. I am weary with crying. My throat is parched. My eyes grow dim with waiting for my God. Answer me, O Lord, for your steadfast love is good. According to your abundant mercy, turn to me. Do not hide your face from your servant, for I am in distress. Make haste to answer me. Draw near to me. Redeem me. Set me free. I've had so many conversations with so many people from our community, maybe some of you, and I think a lot of us are feeling similarly, that we're just feeling angry about how things are in the world or scared or so sad. And I've been praying Psalms like this with a lot of people because there are so many things that are not right. But we have this tradition in our faith of letting God have it. And the Syrophoenician woman demonstrated how important and how moving it can be to let God have it. To be honest, to bow down at Jesus' feet in desperation and say, heal my daughter, 
please. And if it doesn't seem like God's listening, stand up and say it again. And it does shift things. Blessing does come out of that. Look how Jesus was rerouted after the Syrophoenician advocated and persisted and stood up and told him what she needs and what her daughter needed. And healing came, blessing came. And Jesus went on and expanded his ministry to so many people. I don't know what was going on in Jesus' mind when he said those things. I'm not going to even try to really figure it out because we'll never know. But we see in this Syrophoenician woman a model of persistence and advocacy and strength. And we see that blessing came. So advocate, persist. Whatever's in your heart, whatever you're wailing about or frightened about or angry about, we don't need to hide it and tamp it down all the time. But let God know. Let God know how you're doing. Let God know how you're feeling. Let God know what you need. Persist, and blessing does come. Amen. And now let us stand and affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets, we believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people. May your peace shine among us and your love set us free. Lord, we pray. Keep us persevering in faith and set in our hearts the desire for your kingdom. Lord, hear us. Guide your church along the way of the gospel. May your Holy Spirit keep her welcoming. Lord, hear us. We pray for the leaders of the nations, especially for Joe, our president. May they have the will to promote justice and freedom. Lord, hear us. O Christ, you have taken our weakness upon yourself and taken charge of our illnesses. Support those who are going through trials, especially those on our parish prayer list. Sheila, Dami, Loretta, Micah, Jeff, Bill and family, Angie, Dan, Debbie, Jacob, Anne, Nikki, Brad, Lauren, Joan, Christy, Travis, Carrie, Emily, Zoe, Felix, Greg, 
Lynn, Susie, Johanna, Jim, Sandy, Eric, Judy, Jana, Ken, Hannah, Johnny, Nicole, John, Edie, Karen, Phyllis, Maggie, Sandra, Will, Tina, Joan, Rob, and all those suffering with mental illness, health issues, clergy, healthcare workers, hospital chaplains, funeral directors, and all of those affected by COVID-19. For whom else should we, should we pray? You may offer your prayer silently or aloud. For those who work with the oppressed, with foreigners, and with the lonely, Lord, hear our prayer. Hear us. We entrust to you our families and friends, all who have asked for our prayers and who pray for us. These prayers are submitted by you, the people of St. Luke's. We pray for the repose of the soul of Will, for his wife, Tina, and for Will's children who grieve. We pray for all grieving loved ones lost to COVID. We pray for the repose of the soul of Amber. May Will and Amber rest in peace and rise in glory. We pray for Rachel and all those evacuated from Hurricane Ida's floods. May we as a nation come together to address so many needs, especially for new immigrants. For women and girls whose rights are threatened in the United States, in Afghanistan and throughout the world. For all Americans and allies who were left stranded in Afghanistan, for all who feared their lives under the Taliban rule. For our country, for the Northern Colorado region, and for the city of Fort Collins, that the Christians here may be witnesses to truth and creators of unity. Lord, we pray. Lord, hear us. Jesus, our joy, you want us to have hearts that are simple, a kind of springtime of the heart, and then the complications of existence do not paralyze us so much. You tell us, don't worry. Even if you have very little faith, I, Christ, am with you always. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And when you're finished greeting your neighbors, have a seat. Well, good morning, everyone. It is a joy to worship with you, whether you're worshiping here in person or online from home. I'm so glad that we are one community. You are all going to get in your mailboxes this newsletter in the next couple of days. If you're somebody who hasn't been getting mail from us, you can take one. We have a few extras outside. If you do usually get mail from us, you'll get it in your mailbox tomorrow or the day after, most likely. Um, there is so much going on. So I want to highlight a few things to you so that you don't miss anything. There's information on the back of the newsletter, when you do get it, about our Welcome Back Sunday. Welcome Back Sunday is next Sunday, one week from today, and a lot of our new programs will kick off that week. Uh, at the 10.30 service, we will have our choir back, which we are very excited about. There will be a lot more music. Um, so if you love the choir, come at 10.30 next week. And in between the services, we'll have our first community breakfast since COVID hit us. Um, we'll have individually wrapped bagel sandwiches from Gibbs Bagels in between the two services. So if you're here for the 8 a.m. service, just stick around. It'll be all outside so that we're nice and safe. Um, and we'll ask that you wear your mask while picking up your food. And then you can distance and sit on the lawn as you feel safe doing. It should be a lot of fun. 
We do ask that you sign up if you think you're going to come to that. There's a sign up table out here in the narthex, and you can actually check off which type of sandwich you get. So you can choose from you know, bagel and cream cheese or bacon, egg and cheese, and so on. So if you would sign up and let us know what kind of food you want, it's $5 a sandwich, and we're really excited to have a community meal together once again. We're so glad that we know more about this stinky virus and how to stay safe. On that day, we'll also launch our Wonder Church for children. They will be all outside and masked, so they will again be very safe. That's for kids age two through fifth grade, um, and it's gonna be a lot of fun. They're gonna be creating their worship space. Don over here made a cross for them to paint because they requested a cross to paint. They've got, they're gonna do lots of art. It's gonna be really great. There's sign up, uh, a registration for that on our website. And youth group will also start at 3 p.m. For adults that week, I'm gonna try to quickly run through all of it because it's all so good. We will have a few new small groups. One will meet for three Fridays, starting Friday, September 17th. It's called Bibles, Brews, and Haikus. They will meet on the West Lawn and they will spend some time in the ancient practice of Lectio Divina. They're also gonna look at writing some haikus no poetry experience necessary, but a sort of a way of distilling the meaning of the scripture that you're hearing. And when the Bible reflection is over, if you would like to bring some brews or your favorite drink of choice, there will be some social time afterwards. So come on over for Bibles, Brews, and Haikus beginning September 17th. Beginning Tuesday, September 14th, we'll have a new group called A Home for All and it fits into the theme for the fall. The theme for our whole fall is a home for all. We'll be participating in something called a season of creation. A season of creation has been happening for many years, and it's an, uh, a coming together of Christians from all the different major denominations all around the world to pray and work on creation issues. We look at how we can take care of creation and also care for the vulnerable people who inhabit creation. And so this group, A Home for All, will meet once a month to talk about how we can care for creation and the vulnerable people in our community. In between those monthly meetings, there will be some reflecting that they do online and a little bit of homework, doing things like researching the work that's already being done in our community. Who is doing some great advocacy work for vulnerable people or of creation? We know in Colorado there is so much work being done uh, so we will do a little bit of work on our own, reflecting and also reading bits of scripture and theology and then talk about it once a month to try and find how St. Luke's is called to care for the vulnerable in creation and care for creation moving forward. Two other things just to point out to you, because I, again, don't want you to miss it. There will be a book group. Uh, reading the book, The Cost of Discipleship by Dietrich Bonhoeffer. Dietrich Bonhoeffer is a great theologian, one of the greatest theologians of the last century. He's also famous for his Nazi resistance, and he was accused of actually trying to plot to assassinate Hitler. So a very interesting person who talks about the cost of discipleship, and we'll have a book group that we'll meet on Zoom um, beginning the end of September. And the last thing to point out right now is EFM, Education for Ministry that we're doing in partnership with St. Paul's just around the corner. It's really a wonderful program in which you do a deep dive, almost like a year of seminary education spread over three years for lay people. It's a great group and some people from St. Luke's did it with the folks at St. Paul's last year. If you're interested, read about it in the newsletter. There are a few other things in here too, and I'm not gonna go over every single detail because I'd stand here for an hour, but make sure when you do get this newsletter that you take a really good look and think about how you wanna commit to being a person in faith this year. How do you wanna commit to making a home for all or making this place a home for you and taking a really deep dive in your faith uh, if you have questions, don't hesitate to ask. I'm happy to talk to you about any of this.
And if you don't get regular mail or email from us, or you think you're missing some communication, fill out one of these welcome cards, especially if you've come in the last few months and we didn't collect all your info. These welcome cards are out in the Narthex or on the Usher check-in table. Fill out all your info, and we'll make sure you stay in the loop. And now, let us prepare for a holy communion with this offering of music. Would you please stand? The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We praise you and we bless you, holy and gracious God, source of life abundant. From before time you made ready the creation. Your spirit moved over the deep and brought all things into being. Sun, moon, and stars, earth, winds, and waters, and every living thing. 
You made us in your image and taught us to walk in your ways. But we rebelled against you and wandered far away. And yet, as a mother cares for her children, you would not forget us. Time and again, you called us to live in the fullness of your love. And so this day, we join with saints and angels in the chorus of praise that rings through eternity, lifting our voices to magnify you as we say, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Glory and honor and praise to you, holy and living God, to deliver us from the power of sin and death and to reveal the riches of your grace. You looked with favor upon Mary, your willing servant, that she might conceive and bear a son, Jesus, the holy child of God. Living among us, Jesus loved us. He broke bread with outcasts and sinners, healed the sick, and proclaimed good news to the poor. He yearned to draw all the world to himself, yet we were heedless of his call to walk in love. Then the time came for him to complete upon the cross the sacrifice of his life and to be glorified by you. On the night before he died for us, Jesus was at table with his friends. He took bread, gave thanks to you, broke it and gave it to them and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine. Again, he gave thanks to you, gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Now gathered at your table, O God of all creation, remembering Christ crucified and risen, who was and is and is to come, we offer to you our gifts of bread and wine and ourselves a living sacrifice. Pour out your spirit upon these gifts that they may be the body and blood of Christ. Breathe your spirit over the whole earth and make us your new creation, the body of Christ given for the world you have made. In the fullness of time, bring us with St. Luke and with all your saints from every tribe, language, and people, and nation to feast at the banquet prepared from the foundation of the world. Through Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. Amen. And now as our Savior Jesus Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Behold who you are, become what you receive. You may now pull your masks down and share in communion together. Now in solidarity with those who are worshiping from home and who might not have 
communion with you. We will share in this prayer of spiritual communion, acknowledging that as we long for Christ, wherever we are, we are one with Christ. Let us pray. Lord of the feast, may we be reminded of the many times we have been fed at your table, always being drawn closer to you in the breaking of the bread. We acknowledge your presence among us, just as you were present with your disciples. May your Holy Spirit continue to strengthen us to live, learn, and love beyond our walls for the sake of your love in our lives forever and ever. Amen. Now let us join in the post-communion prayer. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join me in uh, saying a prayer for the power of the Spirit among people of God. God of all power and love, we give thanks for your unfailing presence and the hope you provide in times of uncertainty and loss. Send your Holy Spirit to enkindle in us your holy fire. Revive us to live as Christ's body in the world, a people who pray, worship, learn, break bread, share life, heal neighbors, bear good news, seek justice, rest and grow in the spirit. Wherever and however we gather, unite us in common prayer and send us in common mission that we and the whole creation might be restored and renewed through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. One more announcement, primarily for the people who are worshiping at home or for some of you who sometimes worship at home. Beginning next week, we will temporarily change the time that the online service is posted because the choir will be back and we would like to see the choir in the online uh, video of the sermon, of the service, excuse me. It will be posted closer to noon. And that is because if we run it completely live, it gets super glitchy. If you've tried to watch the service when we've been struggling with our internet, you know what I'm talking about. So until our internet from the city arrives, starting next week, the online service will be posted at noon and you'll get the whole choir experience. Live without fear. Your creator has made you holy has always protected you and loves you as a mother. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.